management of risk through derivatives. We all know that derivative products minimize the impact of fluctuations in asset prices on the profitability and cash flow situation of risk averse investors. In this lesson, we will discuss the meaning and concept of derivative, explain the different strategies of risk management, explain future and forward contract, and state the five generic types of swaps. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain derivative, describe types of risk faced by banks, understand risk management strategies, define hedging, discuss OTC and exchange traded, forward futures, swap, credit derivative, etc. and analyze securitization. Derivative is a product whose value is derived from the value of one or more basic variables called basis, underlying asset, index or reference rate in a contractual manner. The underlying asset can be equity, foreign exchange, commodity or any other asset. An easy way to think of derivatives is as a side bet on interest rates, exchange rates, commodity prices and practically anything that you can think of. The derivatives are securities under the SCRA and thus the regulatory framework under the SCRA governs the trading of derivatives. The important characteristics of derivatives are derivatives possess a combination of novel characteristics not found in any form of assets. It is comfortable to take a short position in derivatives than in other assets. Derivatives can be closely matched with specific portfolio requirements. Derivatives maintain a close relationship between their values and the values of underlying assets. The change in values of underlying assets will have effect on values of derivatives based on them. Increased volatility in asset prices in financial markets and increased integration of national financial markets with the international markets are the factors that have been driving the growth of financial derivatives. In the derivatives market, there shall be a two-level system of members, viz. clearing members and non-clearing members. The clearing member takes the responsibility for settlement of trade on behalf of the non-clearing member. Foreign exchange rate risk occurs when companies conduct business across borders. They may deal in foreign currencies. Foreign exchange risk arises out of the fluctuation in value of assets, liabilities, income or expenditure when unanticipated changes in exchange rates occur. Interest rate risk is simply the risk to which an institution is exposed because future interest rates are uncertain. Liquidity risk refers to the bank's ability to meet its cash obligation to depositors and borrowers. It stems out of mismatches in the maturity patterns of assets and liabilities. Gap analysis is the most important technique used to manage liquidity risk. Credit risk arises when a financial institution cannot get back the money from loan or investment. The main reason for bank or financial institution is bad loans. Market risk refers to variability in return on investment due to market factors that affect all investments in a similar fashion. Operational risk is the most important risk for an organization. Operational risk may result from inadequate or failed internal processes, people and systems or from external events. Technology and operational risk are closely interrelated and every financial institution requires handling it effectively. The purpose of technology expansion is to increase operation efficiencies and reduce operation cost. In general, risk management strategies provide holders of concentrated equity positions the ability to protect against a decrease in the value of the stock, generate liquidity, diversify the exposure, 
and potentially defer capital gains taxes. Risk avoidance is just that, avoiding the risk associated with a specific task, activity or project. Often, following the review of a contract, it is determined that a project is just too risky. Risk avoidance is strictly a business decision and sometimes a very good strategy if construction documents are unclear, ambiguous or incomplete. Risk abatement is the process of combining loss prevention or loss control to minimize a risk. Risk retention is a good strategy only when it is impossible to transfer the risk or based on an evaluation of the economic loss exposure it is determined that the diminutive value placed on the risk can be safely absorbed. Risk transfer is the shifting of the risk burden from one party to another. Risk allocation is the sharing of the risk burden with other parties. This is usually based on a business decision when a client realizes that the cost of doing a project is too large and needs to spread the economic risk with another firm. The term hedging is fairly clear. It would cover derivative market positions that are designed to offset the potential losses from existing cash market positions. Hedging an investment in a stock with a short position in another stock's futures is not acceptable hedge because of effectiveness concerns. This would be true even for merger arbitrage where long and short positions in two merging companies are combined to benefit from deviations of market prices from the swap ratio. Hedge fund strategies like aggressive growth. Hedge fund investors invest in equities expected to experience acceleration in growth of earnings per share. These are generally high PE ratios, low or no dividends often smaller and micro-cap stocks, which are expected to experience rapid growth. Distress securities, investors buy equity, debt or trade claims at deep discounts of companies in or facing bankruptcy or reorganization. Emerging market, hedge funders invest in equity or debt of emerging markets, which tend to have higher inflation and volatile growth and short selling is not permitted in many emerging markets. Mix and matches hedge funds and other pooled investment vehicles. This blending of different strategies and asset classes aims to provide a more stable long-term investment return than any of the individual funds. Macro aims to profit from changes in global economies typically brought about by shifts in government policy which impact interest rates, in turn affecting currency, stock and bond markets. Arbitrage focuses on obtaining returns with low or no correlation to both the equity and bond markets. These relative value strategies include fixed income arbitrage, mortgage-backed securities, capital structure arbitrage and closed-end fund arbitrage. Investment approach is diversified by employing various strategies simultaneously to realize short and long-term gains. Over-the-counter OTC derivatives are those contracts which are traded directly between two parties and through any stock exchange. Products such as swaps Forward rate agreements and exotic options are almost always traded in this way. The OTC derivative market is the largest market for derivatives and is largely unregulated with respect to disclosure of information between the parties. Since the OTC market is made up of banks and other highly sophisticated parties such as hedge funds. Exchange-traded derivative contracts are those derivative instruments that are traded via specialized derivative exchanges or other exchanges. A derivative exchange is a market where individual trade standardized contracts that have been defined by the exchange. A forward contract is an agreement made today between a buyer and a seller to exchange the commodity or instrument for cash at a predetermined future date at a price agreed upon today. The agreed upon price is called the forward price. In a forward contract, two parties agree to do trade at some future date 
at a stated price and quantity. No money changes hands at the time the deal is signed. The forward contracts are affected by the problems like lack of centralization of trading, liquidity and counterparty risk. The first derivative product to be introduced in the Indian securities market is going to be index futures. The futures contract is traded on a futures exchange as a standardized contract subject to the rules and regulations of the exchange. It is the standardization of the futures contract that facilitates the secondary market trading. Index futures are the future contracts for which underlying is the cash market index. Basis is defined as the difference between cash and future prices. Basis can be either positive or negative. Basis turns to zero at maturity of the futures contract. That is, both cash and future prices converge at maturity. Fair price equals to spot price plus cost of carry minus inflows. Cost of carry equals to financing cost, storage cost and insurance cost. If futures price is greater than fair price, buy in the cash market and simultaneously sell in the futures market. If futures price is less than fair price, sell in the cash market and simultaneously buy in the futures market. This arbitrage between cash and futures market will remain till prices in the cash and futures market get aligned. Commodity futures where the underlying is a commodity of physical assets such as wheat, cotton, butter, eggs, etc. Financial futures where the underlying is a financial asset such as foreign exchange, interest rate, shares, treasury bills or stock index. The buyer of futures contract has an obligation to purchase the underlying instrument at a price when the spot price is above the contract price. The seller of the contract makes a profit when the contract price is above the spot price. An option is a contractual agreement that gives the option buyer the right but not the obligation to purchase or to sell a specified instrument at a specified price at any time of the option buyers choosing buy or before a fixed date in the future. Upon exercise of the right by the option holder, an option seller is obliged to deliver the specified instrument at the specified price. The key difference between futures and options is that the former involves obligations, whereas the latter confer rights. Futures are a contractual obligation to buy and sell at an agreed price at a future date. The contract terms are standardized by future exchanges and the obligation from both buyer and seller is confirmed when the initial margin or deposit changes hands. An option does not carry the same obligations. Options are classified into two broad categories, call option and put option. A call option gives the holder the right to buy an underlying asset by a certain date for a certain price. The seller is under an obligation to fulfill the contract and is paid a price of this, which is called the call option premium or call option price. A put option, on the other hand, gives the holder the right to sell an underlying asset a certain date for a certain price. The buyer is under an obligation to fulfill the contract and is paid a price for this, which is called the put option premium or put option price. Exotic options are often mistaken to be another kind of option. They are nothing but non-standard derivatives and are not a third type of option. If the premium is more than what is initially cost plus the commission, there is a profit. If the premium is less, there is a loss, but keeping some money is better than losing all the money. The broker must be notified before options expire. Not all options have an automatic exercise provision. Therefore, an in-the-money option that expires without any action taken losses the buyer money. A seller somewhere will be happy. When a trader sells an option, he or she can exit the trade by buying the option back. If the premium is higher, the option seller has lost money. 
the option seller cannot exercise his or her option. A credit derivative is a financial instrument used to mitigate or to assume specific forms of credit risk by hedgers and speculators. Though the credit derivative has been invented to hedge the risk of banks, it has also become popular in insurance companies, asset management companies, mutual funds, hedge funds, pension funds, corporate treasurers, etc. Credit derivatives allow users to isolate price and trade firm specific credit risk by unbundling a debt instrument or a basket of instruments into its component parts and transferring each risk to those best suited or most interested in managing it. The credit linked notes market is one of the fastest growing areas in credit derivative sector. A credit default swap is a swap in which one counterparty receives a premium at preset intervals in consideration for guaranteeing to make a specific payment should a negative credit even take place. A variation on the credit option is a credit spread option. Buying or selling an option on a borrower's credit spread provides an opportunity to gain exposure on the borrower's future credit risk. Credit spread options are normally associated with bonds which are priced and traded at a spread over a benchmark instrument of comparable maturity. A swap can be defined as the exchange of one stream of future cash flows with another stream of cash flows with different characteristics. A swap is an agreement between two or more people or parties to exchange sets of cash flows over a period in future. The currency swaps are agreements whereby currencies are exchanged at specified exchange rates and specified intervals. The basic purpose of swaps is to lock in the rate. Swaps can be used to hedge certain risk such as interest rate risk or to speculate on changes in the underlying. A swap is a derivative in which two counterparties agree to exchange one stream of cash flows against another stream. These streams are called the legs of the swap. An interest rate swap is an agreement whereby one party exchanges one set of interest rate payments for another. The most common arrangement is an exchange of fixed interest rate payment for another rate over a time period. The interest rates are calculated on notional values of principles. The five generic types of swaps in order of their quantitative importance are interest rate swaps, currency swap, credit swap, commodity swap, and equity swap. An equity swap is a special type of total return swap where the underlying asset is a stock, a basket of stocks, or a stock index. A variance swap is a financial derivative whose payoff is equal to the difference between the square of annualized realized volatility that is the annualized realized variance of returns on the underlying price and a fixed quantity, sometimes known as the variance strike over a given period. It is effectively a forward contract on the realized variance. Interest rate swap were originally created to allow multinational companies to evade exchange controls. Absorption is an option granting its owner the right but not the obligation to enter into an underlying swap. There are two types of swaption contracts. First, a receiver swaption gives the owner of the swaption the right to enter into a swap where they will receive the fixed leg and pay the floating leg. Second, a pair swaption gives the owner of the swaption the right to enter into a swap where they pay the fixed leg and receive the floating leg. Securitization is the process of creating securities backed by a pool of loans or receivables. In a securitization transaction, the burden of the source of repayment to those holding the created securities shifts from the cash flow of the corporate issuer to the cash flow of a pool of loans or receivables and or 
to a third party that guarantees the payments if the asset pool does not generate sufficient cash flow. The main reason why non-financial corporations will use securitization was potential to reduce funding cost. It provides a tool for risk management through securitization which is the most important other reason for the non-financial corporations. The credit risk associated with a defined pool of receivables, that is assets, are isolated from the originator of the receivables, then structured and passed on to one or more investors in the form of at least two different risk positions in a securitization transaction. The RBI issued guidelines on securitization of standard assets in February 2006. These guidelines, as alluded to earlier, prohibit originators from booking profits upfront at the time of securitization. Two other features relate to maintenance of capital at the required minimum of 9% on any credit enhancement provided and disallowing the release of credit enhancement during the life of the credit enhanced transaction. Now let's see how much you have learned till now. State whether the following statements are true or false. A contract which derives its values from the prices or index of prices of underlying securities is equity derivative. True. In distressed securities, investors buy equity, debt or trade claims at deep discounts of companies in or facing bankruptcy or reorganization. False. An interest rate swap is an agreement whereby one party exchanges one set of interest rate payments for another. True. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied so far. Derivative is a product whose value is derived from the value of one or more basic variables called basis, underlying asset, index or reference rate in a contractual manner. Risk avoidance is just that, avoiding the risk associated with a specific task, activity or project. Risk abatement is the process of combining loss prevention or loss control to minimize a risk. Hedging an investment in a stock with a short position in another stock future is not an acceptable hedge because of effectiveness concerns. Forward contracts are private bilateral contracts and have well-established commercial usage. Future contracts are standardized tradable contracts fixed in terms of size, contract date and all other features. Swaps can be divided into two types, viz. A. Currency Swap B. Interest Rate Swap Securitization is the process of creating securities backed by a pool of loans or receivables. The credit risk associated with a defined pool of receivables, that is assets, are isolated from the originator of the receivables, then structured and passed on to one or more investors in the form of at least two different risk positions in a securitization transaction.